All right, nucleic acids. So I promised you that we we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. So we're gonna we're gonna drive this point home much later um, in the semester as well. So nucleic acid is things like DNA, RNA, and ATP, and they are composed of hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and phosphorus. So chomp. Um, that instead of an M, it's an N. Um, the monomer for a nucleic acid is a nucleotide. It's composed of three parts, a five carbon sugar, a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. Again, we're not really going to talk much about this at all, but just know that the subunit of a nucleic acid is a nucleotide. Nucleic acids are are vital in storing and transmitting hereditary or genetic information, your DNA. That is vital to who you are, how you function, um, even your body's ability to just break down um, food and make energy. Proteins. So proteins are found in all sorts of of different things. Um, protein is, proteins are probably the most um, varied macromolecule of all. There are tons and tons and tons of different proteins. So if you're if you're given something that doesn't end in an OSC or doesn't have the word um, lipid in it, chances are it's a protein. Proteins have lots and lots and lots of functions. They're found in meats and beans and eggs. And so that picture over there shows you just a variety of um, foods that you would find protein in. Proteins are composed of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, so they are chon. And an amino acid is a monomer of the protein. Um, amino acids have three parts, an amino group, a carboxyl group and an R group. We're not going to focus on amino or carboxyl groups because that's organic chemistry, but we are going to talk some about that R group. So I promised you at the beginning of this unit that there were four types of bonds we were going to talk about. Here's the fourth, a peptide bond. So a peptide bond is a covalent bond that links an amino acid to another amino acid to form a polypeptide. Polypeptides are the building blocks of proteins. Proteins have, the, we don't just call a protein a polypeptide because there's so much more to how a protein folds, how it's fit into the nucleus that we're not even going to address. Um, but it is a subunit, it's kind of a beginning stage of a protein, is a polypeptide. So the structure and function of a protein, there are 20 different amino acids that make up the subunits of proteins. Each amino acid differs in its R group. Some R groups are going to be polar, some are going to be nonpolar or acidic or basic, which um, strung together give the protein a variety of functions. Um, and a protein may be acidic in one area and basic in another area, which once it's all folded up, packaged up, ready to go, makes it just neutral. Um, they may be a ring structure. The R group may be ringed. It may be a small linear structure. The R group is going to vary for every amino acid or all 20 different amino acids. So in this picture here, this is your carboxyl, and this is your amine, or your amino group. And so your protein always has an amino group, a carboxyl group, group, and then your R group. This is what makes every amino acid different. And the type of R group determines how the amino acid functions. And amino acids go together to make up your big protein. Some proteins um, will control the rate of a reaction. Others will regulate cell processes. 
Others make cellular structures that are really important, while some transport substances into or out of cells or help fight disease. So that goes to show you how much proteins do. They're not just simple structures that only provide energy um, or waterproof coverings um, or store energy. They, they can do just about anything.